Hey guys, this is Ashley. I hope you are doing great today. Welcome to my channel or back to my channel. And today I'm talking about getting out of our own way. And this is something that I need to just really let you guys know like how I have overcame it or let me just say over how I'm overcoming it. And I also am just gonna talk about self-sabotage and how to stop it, those type of things, why we have it, all of that. First, I'm about to make a quick smoothie because I have not had lunch and then we're gonna sit down and have a chat. I think I'm gonna make a pineapple beet smoothie. We'll see how it turns out, see how it tastes. Forgot to add the protein powder. Let's see what this combination tastes like. Mmm, pretty good. I really like this. It's pineapple, strawberries, a cooked beet, banana, put protein powder in here. Also put ashwagandha in it. All right, smoothie is done. It is really good. So let's go sit down and talk about getting out of our own way and just self-sabotage, all of these things. All right, so when it comes to self-sabotage, I feel like I finally figured out how to put the right language to like what is happening in my life or I will say has been happening in my life because I'm just in a season where I'm like, okay, I gotta get out of my own way. Like I have to get out of my own head, get out of my own way. So what is that gonna look like? So I'm gonna share with you guys what self-sabotage even is, what it looks like, how we can start getting out of our own way and I'm gonna leave you with some like practical strategies on what to do, like what steps to start taking, some things that have been working really well for me. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so let's start talking about what self-sabotage even is and how it can manifest, what it looks like, all of those things. Self-sabotage is when you essentially are holding yourself back from meeting your fullest potential. And it can manifest in many different ways. It can look like making excuses, like why you can't do something, why you don't have time to do something. Um, it can look like procrastinating. It can look like putting things off when you could get it done actually. It can look like just self, negative self-talk and like doubting yourself. Like the things that we sometimes think of ourselves or say to ourselves, we probably never say it or think it of other people. So I think that that's so interesting, but it definitely can manifest in so many ways. It can even look like having the inability to make decisions. So just feeling like frozen and stuck when it comes to decisions either in your life or maybe it deals with like your future. And for me, it sometimes looks like just overthinking decisions, like knowing what I need to do, knowing what I'm called to do and not actually doing it because I'm overthinking. And then sometimes it can manifest and look like me trying to be perfect at what I produce or what I put out. So now perfectionism's in the play as well. So it, it honestly can look so many different ways, but essentially it's holding yourself back in some way from accomplishing the goals that you have for your life. And then it can just kind of sneak in. The reason why this happens is because our brain is seeking comfort. Our subconscious mind wants to stay in a comfortable place because that means we're safe like that means safety for our mind which sometimes is good to kind of have that triggered and kick in but when it comes to accomplishing goals that's not good because our subconscious mind is trying to keep us in our comfort zone that's why it's so easy when you start a task to fall off of it so if you say i'm gonna start working out and you work out for two weeks a month even a month and a half two months whatever it looks like and then all of a sudden you stop that's because you've reached the end of your comfort zone. So a lot of this kind of came up for me because I started reading this book called The Power of One More. Great book, I'll link it down below so you guys can check it out. A lot that's discussed in the book is the connection between self-talk, self-confidence, and also self-sabotage. And it's so interesting how the author breaks it down. One thing that's talked about is the reticular activating system, which is the RAS in the brain. It sounds deep, but it's really not. Essentially what's happening here is that we're training our brain on what to scout out and think about. This part of our brain is kind of hunting and finding things for us to focus on. 
For example, if your car that you are dreaming to get in the next year or two years or whatever is a Tesla, then I guarantee when you're on the highway, you are going to see Teslas everywhere because you've now trained your brain to say, this is our goal, this is what we're gonna get to, and this is what I, I noticed. So that's why we kind of notice things that we are focused on. So that says that if we are focused on the positive, focused on actually giving ourselves the confidence or having the confidence that we can achieve certain goals, we will focus on it and there's a higher chance of us accomplishing that goal. All right guys, so let's talk about some ways to start getting out of your own way. We now understand the why, we know why it's happening, we understand the details of what's going on in the brain. So let's talk about what we we can actively do to start getting out of our own way. The number one thing that I want to mention is looking at your emotional and your mental needs. I think when there is an emotional need there, it's so important to figure out like if you need to be a little bit more gentle with yourself that day, figuring out what help you need to get, what you need to do. Something that I love to do is just wake up and be super intentional with like my time when I'm waking up in the morning. So for me, it's having a strict morning routine that feels right. That feels right so I can make sure my cup is full, making sure I'm sitting with myself. I think that's good. Even if throughout the day you you stop and you pause and you just say what do you need right now are you good are you all right and then continue your work i think it's so important to figure out emotionally do i need something do i need some outside help do i need to just sit with myself more because i think in today's society we don't sit with ourselves enough because it's so easy to pick up the phone and scroll get on tiktok get on instagram and it's so addicting as well and it feels good because we no longer have to think about what we're currently dealing with in our lives we can just be so engaged in someone else's life. That's why I think it's so great to make sure you're not just disassociating and scrolling and not checking on yourself because that's gonna make accomplishing your goals really hard. Sitting down, trying to get something done, but being filled with anxiety is very challenging. And you have to monitor like, how am I doing? What do I need? Do I need to talk to somebody? Do I need, what, what do I need? What, what is necessary right now? So that is my first point. Make sure you're doing good emotionally. Next one is definitely important as well, and it's having a clear vision, like creating the vision, making it plain, essentially understanding your why. This is one that I feel like helps me so much because whenever something feels challenging or feels hard, I remind myself of my why. Why am I doing this? Why am I showing up in this way? why do I, why, why am I working so hard on this goal? And once I do that, it gives me a little bit more mm, to like push to keep going. So I definitely would recommend like writing down your why, being very specific with it, naming out the people that you're trying to help through what you're doing or the audience, whatever it looks like for you, but being detailed about what your why is, creating the vision and making it plain. All right, y'all, the next one, let me sip my smoothie for this one. This next one, God had to really work on me with, and it is using the resources that you have. So let me just share my story really quickly. I felt led to start on YouTube, and this was probably, what, maybe a year and a half ago now, or it's been a bit, it's been a bit of time. When that happened, I felt like I didn't have the resources to start because we had just had our apartment broken into not too long before, so we did not have laptops that I could edit on. We had computers, but we couldn't use them for editing purposes. Of course, I didn't have a light. I didn't like the background of like where I needed to record it. I didn't like how it looked. I, what else? I didn't have a microphone. I didn't have a phone that had good quality, meaning I had a very old iPhone. iPhones have great quality, but I, when I tell you I had an old iPhone, it was old, like it was very old. And I used the resources I had. Like I felt God saying, just take this step and I will, will help you along the way. And I was like, Whew. and actually my husband reminded me of this at that time. He was like, God's not gonna call you to do something and not like give you what you need to do it. He said it in a different way, but that was essentially his point. So what I did was I just started, like I asked my husband to use his phone because he had a slightly newer phone. We got a very cheap ring light. I got a very cheap microphone and I just sat in front of the window and just started recording videos. 
And eventually over time, I was provided with the things that I needed. So I remember I was working a job and they gave me a MacBook to do the work and I kind of edited on it on the side, you know, after work hours, even though I probably shouldn't have been doing it anyway. But I remember editing the videos on the MacBook I was given from my job. I then upgraded to a box light. I then upgraded to a new phone, got a new um, microphone. And, but this was over the span of these past like couple year and a half, two years. Now I have like a great lighting that I love. I love the microphone I have. I still edit off the phone that I got. And I was also gifted a MacBook. Like, <laughs> how did all this like even occur or happen? But at the time, I'm so glad I just started because I didn't even understand how the rest was gonna fall into place, but God did. So that is my little word of encouragement to you. Like, just start. Whatever you feel called to do, like, just, just go after it. If you take one step, God is going to step in and help you out along the way. So that point is just being intentional about using the resources that you have, figuring out, like, you know, even if it's time, like, really being intentional about just praying, like, God, I don't see where I have the time in my schedule to do this. I don't know who would help me with this or X, Y, and Z if I even tried and attempted it. But I guarantee he's going to show you the way. So I'm glad I started because... I was able to gain so many like hard skills from starting then. So now I'm in a season where like, okay, I know how to show up. I just have to work on getting out of my own way so I can show up more. So let's get into the very next point. All right, so the next one is setting boundaries. This is very simple. Put your phone on do not disturb. Tell people when you're working. Tell people when you need help. <laughs> like don't overexert yourself. Like those type of things. I am now the queen of putting my phone on do not disturb. Like I will do it so quick. I have them for so many different categories. Like I have a little tab for wellness. I have a different tab for a morning routine, nighttime routine, working hours. I will put my phone on do not disturb and get some work done. I'm doing it more so for myself. So that way I can just say your phone is off limits right now. Put it away. We're not scrolling on TikTok and Instagram. We are getting work done. So it's really a reminder for me more than anything else. And the very last thing that I want to leave you with is the importance of just setting small goals. It is so important to set small goals instead of like these huge goals. We can break down the really big goal and then have a small goal that we can accomplish and kind of check off for the day. So if working out is your game plan and working out is your goal, then maybe you're going to start each morning with a five minute stretch. Like really figuring out how to set tiny, tiny goals so that way you can get to your end goal. And something that I like to do is also reward myself. So when I do accomplish a goal, I'm giving myself some type of reward, all of that. Even like just being completely transparent. I have not uploaded a video on YouTube in a bit and I keep putting it off. I record, I don't upload on my own like that or I don't like that about it and I just keep putting it off so I'm like I'm going to record this video today I'm going to upload it tomorrow and if I do I'm going to get a pedicure so like that is my reward I'm not saying your reward has to like actually cost something for me I need a pedicure anyway because we're going to a wedding this weekend and I just I need to get one but this is the way that I'm like rewarding myself for it so this was just a comprehensive list of some of the things I do that help me out and how I'm just in this season of getting out of my own way it's very possible guys it really is and if you're watching this video and you feel like man I just feel so stuck like I feel like I'm not going after what God has called me to do then I'm definitely praying for you below let me know what's one of your goals like let me know one thing that you want to accomplish by the end of the year Mine is being consistent here on YouTube, so I'll be up front and share that with you. So let me know what your goal is, and I will see you guys next week in another video. All right, bye guys. <laughs>